Okay, section 12.3, inscribed angles. You need a definition first. An inscribed angle is formed by two chords and has a vertex on the circle. So angle ABC in this picture is inscribed. It's made up of chords AB and BC and angle B, the vertex, is on the circle. All of that makes this an inscribed angle. Now here's an important uh, formula for you to remember. The measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the arc that it intersects. So where this angle comes up, and if we kept it going we could do that. If we kept this ray going we could do that. The, ang the measure of this angle is going to equal half whatever this arc is. So for example, if this arc was a 100 degree arc, that means this angle would be a 50 degree angle. They're going to ask you down here, and this gets tricky because they're asking several questions in the same picture. So having a highlighter might be helpful just so you can look at, identify what they're asking for and change the color when they give you a new situation. If the measure of angle BCE, BCE, here's the measure, there's that angle. If the measure of that angle is 100, find arc EAB, EAB. They want us to find the arc that goes with that angle. Well, this angle has to be half of the arc, so that means this arc out here is going to be twice as big as the angle, or 200. I'm going to switch colors. If the measure of arc AC, so from A to C, and be careful if they're asking about an angle or an arc, the measure of arc AC is 140 degrees. Find the measure of angle E. Well, if you notice, angle E happens to match the ends of the arc. So from A to C is 140. That means angle E has to be half of that, or 70. Find the measure of angle B, ABD. A, B, D. Notice they're not giving us any information except asking us to find this angle. But if you think about it, this angle intercepts this arc. And arc AED is a semicircle, and we know semicircles are 180. So if that's 180, that means this angle has to be half of that, or 90. All right, why don't you try to find the, the last five? Pause the video for a minute. When you get down here, it might be helpful to put some of that information into the picture besides highlighting to see if you can find the missing parts. All right, I don't have them all filled in, but let's look at these, some of these together. Angle EAD, EAD is this tiny little angle here. It's equal to 30. They want to find the measure of angle EBD. EBD is this little angle right here. Well, if you notice, this angle cuts this arc, ED, but so does this angle. So this angle has to be half of the arc, which is 60, and that means that this arc is 60. This angle is also 30. They intercept the same arc. The measure of arc AEC, AEC, this whole arc back here, most of that circle is 230, which we know because that's more than half a circle, so it's pretty big. Find the measure of angle AEC, AEC. So they want us to find this angle right here. Well, this angle intersects the arc that we already knew here was 140. So, pause for a second. Okay, I did something that you guys might try and do too. Every one of these problems, the information's different, so we can't use previous information for the next problem. But this arc, this angle that they're asking us for, happens to intersect the arc up here. Now, I can't say it's 140. That was a previous answer. But I do know 
that the circle from here to here is 230. So if I took 360 minus 230, I would have 130 left for this arc that's missing up here. And the angle that I want has to be half of that arc. So that means this angle would be 65 degrees. All right, I'm going to pull a different picture in just because I feel like this one's getting super concentrated for us to do the last three. So try these last three. Use some highlighters to put the information in and realize each problem is separate. Okay, for these last three. If B, E, C, that angle is 45, they want us to find the measure of B, E, C, that arc. Well, if this is 45, that means that arc that goes with it is 90. I want the rest of the circle. So if I took 360 minus 90, that leaves the rest of the circle that I'm looking for from B around to E and stopping at C to be 270. If the measure of arc AB is 80, they want us to find angle DAB, DAB is this angle. Well, we know this is a diameter, so from A to C, D, that would be 180. So that means this is 100. Our angle that we want is half of that, so it's going to have to be 50. And for the last one, angle C right here is 95. If that angle that they gave us is 95, they want us to find BAE, the arc BAE. Well, BAE is the arc that's intercepted. So if this angle is 95, the arc has to be twice as big, 95 times 2 means that last arc that we're looking for is 190. It's a little hard to read that. 190. All right, on the back side, inscribed polygons are just that. They are polygons where each vertex is on the circle and the sides are chords of the circle. So ABC, triangle ABC, is inscribed in circle D. D is my, or my center. That's why it's named circle D. ABC is inscribed. We know the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. It's a triangle. It has to equal 180. But check this out. Whatever this angle is, we know the chord over here is twice as big. So let's just make something up. Let's say this is a 60 degree angle. That means this arc would have to be 120. Well, let's just make it simple for ourselves. Let's say this was a 50 degree angle. That means the arc across from it would be 100. If these two add up to 110, that means this missing angle would have to be 70. So the arc across from it would be 140. Well, what happens when I add up 100, 140, and 120? Those are going to be 360. Maybe I should put my angle measures in green. So just like we know the angles of a triangle are going to add up to 180, we can find the angles of any kind of polygon using our n minus 2 times 180. The inscribed, if they're inscribed in the circle, the sum all the way around, all the arcs together are going to have to add up to 360 because that's our full circle. All right, let's see if we can use that idea to help us find some missing parts. We want to find X and Y. Well, first of all, I have two angles here. What do I know about this third one? This inscribed angle has to be half of the arc and from B around to D this direction is 180 it's half a circle so this has to be 90. So my first equation is x plus 4x plus 90 is going to have to equal 180. 5x will equal 90 which means x is going to equal 18. All right to try and find y it's part of this arc this arc is going to be twice as big as whatever this angle is. 
So if I took 18 and plugged it in, 4 times 18 is going to make this angle 72. So because this angle is 72, the arc has to be twice as big. Y is going to equal 2 times 72. Y will equal 144. All right, I want you to think about this angle 5x and this angle x plus 2. They're not the same. This is not a parallelogram where opposite angles are congruent. But this angle 5x intercepts this part of the circle. The angle x plus 2 intercepts the second big part of the circle. And the whole circle is 360. So these two angles, 5x and x plus 2, are going to both have to be half of the whole circle. They're going to add up to 180. 6x is going to equal 178. When we simplify or divide by 6, we're going to get approximately 29.7. See if you can write an equation to find y, and it will give you an exact number. Okay, hopefully you found that y was 20. Because again, 6y covers this angle. 3y covers the opposite angle. And together, they're covering the whole circle. They're intercepting the whole circle. So if you add those two opposite angles together, they're going to equal half intercepted arcs. Inscri inscribed angles equal half of their arcs. So half of the whole circle is 180. All right, let's try and find x and y in this one. This is a little trickier in that these two aren't going to necessarily equal 180 because this angle comes here and angle Y comes here. So we're missing a little bit. However, if I look first at angle Y, let's check that one. Here's angle Y. Angle Y is going to be half of the arc that it's intercepting. Well, I know all of the three arcs that it intercepts. So y is going to have to equal 1 half when I add 90 plus 50 plus 50. That's half of 190. That means y is equal to 95. Alright, now how do I get x? Well, x is this angle. And it's going to be half of the arc here. The problem is I don't know the whole arc, right? Let's look at this 50, though. I know that. I don't, and I don't, but I know these two as well. I don't know these parts. Let me make this purple. might make it a little bit easier to see. I don't know. Maybe the dark purple. This is the angle that I want to find. It's made up of these three arcs, taking half of that, but I don't know two of them. However, I do know the two back here. So these two add up to 140, which means what's the total here if the back side, 90 plus 50, adds up to 140? For x, if I took 360 minus 140, that's not going to get me x yet, but that would give me... 220, and actually I could put that x in there, x is going to have to equal half of whatever I got when I subtracted that. So x is going to be half of the 220, x is going to equal 110. This whole angle, we found the two back ones were 140, so if I subtract 360 minus 140, I find out all of this is 220. And x, this angle, has to be half of the arc that it's inscribing. All right, this is kind of just some interesting things to play around with a little bit. For 12.3, you're only trying three of these. Number one, number three, and number five. For now, just stick with those three. Come to class, have to try them.